we are going to look at what are the essential properties. If I tell you about organic in terms of chemistry, the products which are being used for, uh, for the adhesive applications are generally polyurethane, polysulfide, acrylic or epoxy. So you may be traditionally, uh, you know, you can, if you know the chemistry, you can also relate them to the brands available in the market. But not, you know, just to quote so that you get a feel of the chemistry, like we all know Araldite because that's one of the powerful brand available in the retail, so that's an epoxy. So similarly, if you talk about uh, different, uh, you know, commercially available products, so you can relate them to the chemistries. The one which is available as an inorganic is a silicon sealant and it, is, it comes from various, uh, you know, manufacturers like Dow Corning or Dow Chemicals. Or, or other manufacturers like Momentum or Sika. So these are some of the brands which are predominantly known in the market. And again, uh, this is to give you an overall feel of what is inorganic and anorganic chemistry perspective. So what does it really uh, mean in terms of chemistry is, when you talk about uh, you know, high performance weatherproofing materials, silicon oxygen, the bond, which is the backbone of a silicon sealant, has got an energy of 450 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so if you uh, if you see for any external applications, there is going to be a sunlight which is falling on it. So what is happening essentially here is when the sun is falling on it, or then there is a UV component of the sun which is falling on a particular material. So UV has got an energy of 400 kilojoules per mole. So this particular energy can degrade whatever is lower than that. So that's the simplest way to understand. So if you talk about organic chemistries, their bond energies are lower than the UV uh, light energy. So essentially they can be degraded, but they do stabilize them by using an external stabilizer, which has just got a limited life. But if you look at silicon, the silicon polymer has got an inherently stable backbone. So this is essentially giving it an inherent stability against the exposure of, you know, against UV in the sunlight. So this is one of the key differentiator. So now we are going to go into the details of what is the silicon sealant is. Because this is the product which is going to be used for construction application. Widely for our facade, essentially a structural glazing, insulating glass and weather seal and also other applications. So the essential thing again here on this slide, what is needed to be understood is the silicon sealant is made with a lot of material added to that. So the one of the main thing what is really uh, making the property of this particular product impacted is the polymer. Okay, so the siloxane polymer we saw that, so that polymer has to be added to make the sealant. So the amount of polymer added, uh, you know, varies the properties and this is an essential backbone which gives a very good mechanical, physical, as well as other important properties uh, for the product. So you, you have to cross-link them because this is going to be a cross-linked rubber what you get. So for cross-linkings, you need to have uh, different cross-linkers which has to be added. So there is a polymer change, so you need to cross-link them to make it as a matrix. To make this reaction happen at a faster pace, at the right pace, Catalysts are added. So the catalysts are added and this actually takes care of the rate of cure. The other thing which is also giving some amount of mechanical resistance to this particular material is the fillers. So the fillers are essentially, uh, you know, different types of fillers with different forms have been used, which is actually acting as a reinforcement. So this improves the mechanical properties of the product. So the mechanical properties like the tensile strength, uh, you know, shear strength. So those are the properties which are essentially given by the, the filler. So, but as you all know, there is an amount of addition in the, of the filler will going to reinforce. But you add more and more, you can make the product bulkier or you can make it more with the filler so that you can reduce the cost. So by compromising on the polymer or other contents, you can add more filler. So what is important to understand is you should have a balanced chemistry of additives which are added to make this material. So we, you can make it imbalanced by adding some or other more to make it cost effective, but then the application of that product needs to be understood clearly that this is not a product which is meant to be used for an application where it has to be uh, you know, designed to take loads. So we need to understand and then 
we need to approach the manufacturer, take their guidance of using what product to be used for which application. So for the sealant to dispense, so it has to flow uh, at a particular rate. So normally the extrusion rate, that's what it is called as, so it should have a minimum extrusion rate of say in one component around 200 grams per minute. Otherwise you will not be able to fill or apply the sealant into the joint. So there is some amount of plasticizer added to make it happen in most of the products. But you can do that with a special type of polymer selected and make it non-plasticized essentially for certain applications where you are looking for a non-staining or a non-bleeding with the seals. So there the plasticizer can cause a stain. So this plasticizer otherwise added to the other general products is a non-reactive fluid. This is not going to react with the matrix. So this will be separate and it will come out with time and it can potentially stay in our street. So depending upon the amount of plasticizer added, you can see some of the facades having the black line running down from the joint. So this is essentially because of the non-reactive plasticizer coming out of the sealant due to movement and then the dirt and dust which gets deposited, you know, they can make it look black. And other, other important additional special additives also are very important. One of the, one of the ingredients which is added is adhesion promoter. The sealant has got a good bonding characteristics to many materials and this can be further enhanced by adding an adhesion promoter. So this ensures that the product bonds to various substrates. So as I told you, the essential property of silicon sealant for construction application is to bond. So the intended applications what we are looking at, we want the silicon to bond and take loads or the take movements. So the addition is very, very important. So the addition promoters are, promoters are added as part of the ingredient and this helps in getting good bonding to the substrates. And some of the essential additional features for the product can be obtained using special additives. So, so some of the applications like in moist area, fungicides, uh, some colors to get a good uh, different shades from the sealant can be obtained by, by adding pigments. So uh, the silicon sealant comprises of these materials. So what is also a takeaway from the slide is, these are needed, but you can always vary them to get a formulation to make it right for the application or make cheap and then it can be used and, uh, for a wrong application and it will not give you the desired properties.